so these are pretty cool. I like DR equipment. It's usually built pretty good. You can see it's a pretty old school setup. I'm not sure how old this thing is. At least 30 years old, I would guess. It's a DR field and brush mower. It's a beast. So the dude ran out of tire tread, so he uh, threw a chain on there. Pretty good thinking. And what we have is a Briggs and Stratton, eight horsepower, single cylinder side shaft engine. This thing's been sitting for a long, long time, probably 10 years. Uh, of course, it won't start, but with a little bit of starting fluid, it will turn over and act like it wants to start. So that tells me that this engine is still good. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and take the carburetor off. I know we're going to have to work on it, clean it out, probably rebuild it. Pretty much any time a piece of equipment sits for a while, especially 10 years, you're going to have to work on the carburetor almost guaranteed. Unless you drain it before you store it. Looks like our air filter is in okay shape. I'll probably replace that. And you can see this is where I, you would spray the starting fluid to test it out right into the carburetor throat there. Which is what I did and it started but then it died. So then I sprayed some more starting fluid and it started and it died. And that's all it'll do. So that definitely tells me that we have a fuel delivery problem. Looks like I need a 7 16 socket and a 5 16 Ah, darn it. That's just the phone. Don't worry about that. We don't answer that. Okay, so after you take off the two nuts and the one bolt, you have to remove this little rubber piece. And I'll show you how to do that. Basically, you just want to poke it through. And you'll see what it's attached to. Wait till this car goes by so they don't have to look at my butt crack. I need to get a belt. There we go. That's what you want to do is just poke that thing through. It's just your breather hose that comes off your engine. Basically a vent hose for your engine. And that's the fuel pump there. And the carburetor. Let's take this thing off. So before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and remove the uh, the fuel line from the carburetor. Now's a good time to do that. And that's it there. And I already checked the gas tank is dry, which is perfect. You'll definitely want to clean out your gas tank, empty out all the gas. So whenever you work on your carburetor, you want to you want to make sure to clean out your gas tank and your fuel line as well. Uh, otherwise, you spend all your time in cleaning out the carburetor and if you don't clean out the gas tank, stuff gets back in your carburetor again. So you always clean out the fuel tank. I don't see one, but I'm going to go ahead and install an um, inline fuel filter in this gas line here before I'm done. Give it a wiggle. Be careful, it's attached to a plastic piece here. That can break. Sometimes these are really hard to get off. Uh, this one's gonna be difficult. 
I'm going to spray a little bit of lubricant on here. And get a screwdriver. And kind of work it in between the fuel line here and the inlet valve. All right, you see what I'm doing here, hopefully. Pushing down on it as well as pulling. There we go. All right. Now to get these funky little bolts out, you have to use what I use is a 5 30 seconds socket. It's a six point socket, size five thirty seconds. It's my solid, it's my smallest socket I have in my toolbox. But it is what fits on here. Be careful because you can strip these ends pretty easily okay man this thing's dirty look at that fuel pump I think once I have everything off I'm going to clean it up a bit okay so this carburetor is only connected with these bolts you go and to get it off the linkage to get it off the linkage up here what you need to do is basically just rotate back up here to get it off the linkage you just want to rotate the carburetor and come on almost have it out there we go Disconnect the linkage and this spring. I'll have to bend this spring back into shape. So this is what the carburetor looks like off the vehicle. Let's open it up. All right, let's go over to my workbench here. All right, so I have a 7 16 socket here, which is what you need to take off the float bowl. And you have a gasket. Sometimes it stays on the carburetor. Sometimes it stays on the bolt here. There we go. So not too bad. As you can see there's some sediment down in there and some areas this carburetor needs to be cleaned and you also have a gasket that goes here and it looks like it stayed on the float bowl take it out just grabbed a rag and wiped this out and you can see we're in pretty good shape here I've seen much much worse float bowls and if you do have any rust in the bottom this has a little bit in there you want to make sure to scratch that out so it doesn't flake off and plug up the carburetor so you can take off the float here real easy you just pull out this pin and the float and you can see the float valve here comes right out and this float valve just sets in there so it'll just pop right out of place Yep, this is pretty good news. This carburetor is in good shape. Nice and clean on the inside. One thing we will have to do with it is take out the emulsion tube, which is that brass piece down in there. And you need a slotted screwdriver to get down in there. Uh, you have to be real careful because if you don't have the right size screwdriver, they actually make a special tool, which I have. 
Uh, it's very easy to strip out that brass piece and then you're and you're screwed. So this here is the actual tool. You can see it's kind of a fat, stubby screwdriver. But it, it is a special tool from Briggs & Stratton. I don't remember the part number, so don't ask. Let's see if we can get that thing out. Oh yeah, it came loose. Nice. Now some of these, you have a separate jet in this hole that you do need to take out first before you take out your main nozzle here. This particular design though, all you have to take out is this component in here, which is your main jet and your emulsion tube or your pickup tube built into one component. And still pretty clean in there, but you can see these little tiny holes that need to be cleaned out before you go back in, before you go back together. And of course a hole up through the middle here. And you'll want to clean out down in there. Just make sure you get any sediment out of the carburetor at this point. You can see there is some crusty stuff needs to be cleaned off here. And with a Q-tip I can get down in here, down in here. You also have some holes there that you'll want to make sure are cleared out. Let's see one on each side. Actually there's two on this side, one on this side and make sure that these holes here aren't plugged up. So I think we're clean enough to go back together. So I look down in here and we're clear. And our jet emulsion tube is nice and clean, so let's go back together here. Not too tight. You can break it. go. So here you have your float and your float needle. And the float needle here uh, is a maintenance part which means that they do wear out. So it's always a good idea to put a new one in when you're inside a carburetor. And always, always use genuine Briggs and Stratton parts. This is the part number right here. All right, let's clean this off a little bit. Slow mo. I also want to point out that you have a gasket here. You can see it's all one piece. Let's make sure when you put it on that it doesn't twist and it'll stretch right on. Just like that. I have my new float valve, which just slides into the groove here on the float. Just like that. Float pin. All right. I'm just going to clean this out one more time, make sure it's spotless. All right. Everything's clean. Back together.
You also want to make sure to clean off this little bolt. Looks like I'll be able to reuse this washer. That should do it, nice and snug. I've already cleaned it off, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look under the pilot jet here. Uh, I forgot to look there. This is your mixture screw right here. I'm not going to mess with it. I think the preliminary settings is like one and a half. I'll fine tune it once I get it running. So there's a jet down in here, or a passageway, that you'll want to make sure is good and cleared out. Yeah, so on this model, this is the pilot jet. You can see the hole down in there. But what you need to clear out is the tiny little hole in the end here and of course these side holes but that's very easy to get plugged up so unplug that and I just use a little strand of wire here to get down in there alright let's put him back in there and I'm not going to mess with the adjustment screw right now I'm hoping that no one messed with it and it's close to its necessary adjustment. So this little jet's pretty easy to break. Be careful when screwing it in, not too tight. All right, so we're ready to go back together. All right, time to replace the fuel line. careful taking this off because you can break this fuel valve. Oh, there we go. So at this point, I could rebuild the fuel pump, but I'm not gonna right now. I can always go back and do that if the carburetor is not filling up with gas. So I always put the linkage on first. If you just rotate the carburetor, you can get it on there. And now we'll attach the spring. There we go. And put this gasket back into place. There we go. And this one. Yep. And we can reconnect this fuel line here and just make sure it doesn't get crimped or bent. It has to be the right length, otherwise it'll get a crimp in it or a bend in it and the fuel won't flow correctly. But you can see, but you can see that's how you want to route it on the underside of that thing and up through there. We're going to cinch these down good. Make sure to squish this gasket here that we reused. All right, I think that's good. The best way to do it is usually put this on first. It can be kind of tricky, but it can be done. Just have to poke it through the hole there. Just have to kind of work it back into place. So I almost have it through now. Just have to use my screwdriver and just poke that little sucker through. Ah, finally. So when you put this piece back on, you wanna make sure that this choke lever lines up with this. So when you flip it, it moves that. It turns on your choke. So if you look inside here, you can see your choke plate moving back and forth, so it's activating. 
And now you can put it over the carburetor bolt. Put your nuts back on. Here it is, brand new, and you can see that is the part number right there. Right. Well, I just want to make sure one more time that this gas tank is completely cleaned out. So I can also see that this thing has the wrong spark plug on it. For one, it's a Nippon Denso. For two, it's not the right plug. NGK 1147B2LM. That's all I use. That's all I recommend. No oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, this is like a chainsaw spark plug. Definitely not the right plug. And you can see it was burning pretty rich. There we go. It's your old school kill switch there.